All right, we've got some new gear in the lab, and it arrived in a Ziploc bag. Yes, indeed. It is a uh, Keithley C uh, DMM 7510, seven and a half digit multimeter. You've probably seen this on a few of the other blogs. Um, some of those were loners. This one is here to stay. I bought this. I was really glad to be able to get one. It's an amazing machine, I believe, and so we're going to take a closer look. It is very new. In fact, the Cal date on the uh, certificate is June 10th. So we have, it has just arrived, uh, just been calibrated. This is going to be some fun. This is going to be great for some of the low power measurements I need to make. And we'll team it up with the Keithley 2280S power supply that I've got sitting on the bench. And we'll get to it soon. There's going to be a lot, there's going to be a lot to this. Uh, this is going to show up in a lot of videos. Um, there's a lot of features to go over on this. Um, I'll probably do them in sections just as I need a given set of features. I'll go over it as I uh, use the meter. Now it came in a, uh, it came with a uh, pink anti-static padded bag with a few extra goodies. Software. Let's see, this is the, uh, I think this is just the manual here. And a uh, quick start guide. We'll go through that. And then a software quick start guide. Then you get the uh, ubiquitous uh, USB cable and Ethernet cables. And uh, this does come already equipped with USB and, uh, and, and Ethernet, LXI. And they included also a uh, nice uh, test lead set. And this has various, various clips and some long probes. So those will be, this will be great. I was needing on yet another set of nice test probes. All right, let's dive into this. Okay, let's turn her on and see how long it takes to boot up. So, 10 to 11 seconds. I was a little slow on the on hitting the button there, but yeah, 10 to 11 seconds. That's okay. Uh, that's very reasonable for for a complex device. It isn't as fast as some of my uh, much simpler DMMs that uh, don't do well any of this stuff. And it is touch screen. Um, zoom that in so you can get an idea of exactly how impressive the screen is. Actually, I'll go ahead and take my, the screen protector off. I'll s I often leave these on while I'm still moving equipment around for the first time on the bench, but I'll do it. And there's going to be a little glare from the lights overhead. I've tried to limit that as much as I can. So doing a lot of the functions is just a matter of tapping what it is you want to do, uh, or you can uh, swipe. It's very intuitive. And let's see, let's change our PLCs up to, oops, let's go for 10. Oh, and it took a leading zero without any problem, so somebody, uh, somebody paid attention to, that, to the details on that. Wow, look at that, with no input, look at the wonderful digits. Uh, this is very readable. Uh, you can also zoom in, I believe, if I sweep down, there we go, then you get full full display of just digits a little easier to read i suppose although really this is this is a very high resolution screen it's really easy to read um, swap swiping uh, seems to work pretty well i i've really just turned this on uh, last night did a quick kind of through the menus just to look around i haven't taken any measurements really so we'll take a measurement and let's get out the keithley probes uh, Okay, this is just annoying, these little pieces of paper. Uh, they're actually pretty durable. They're not just paper. They're, they're durable labels. I'm sure they're there to meet some sort of regulation or a lawyer said to do that, but I think I've got a solution here. Well, that's, uh, 
Now they're gone. That That's probably an OSHA rule violated. So we've got these uh, nice probes. Fire them up. Got some interesting clips here. Oh, this is uh, interesting. So you open the hook. It's a hook. Uh, let's see. It's got a pretty, pretty good size, pretty good size hook, and uh, wraps all the way around. It's got a diagonal slide there to kind of capture the wire. The cut on this is diagonal, so that's good. So here are the probes. Um, they are, they come with the 1KV Cat 3 uh, probe, but that's with this little cap on. Without this cap on, it's 1KV Cat 2, it says. Yeah. And these are, wow, these are sharp. And what to measure? Well, oh, here we go. Um, continuity. Always one of uh, Dave's favorite tests for a DMM. Let's see what it does. Oh, it's latched. So, not that we didn't expect that, I suppose. It latches for quite a while. You're not going to miss that. Let me switch over to the microphone. Um, so, going to get a lot of background noise from here in the lab. Uh, ventilation system's kicking in. But you can hear that. It's well latched and uh, plenty loud. One thing I like in a meter is a good diode test. We have a diode test function down here. Let's try that out. See if I can bring this in just a little closer. And let's see what it says. So these are the LED, the little uh, surface mount devices that I was testing before with the tweezers. And I couldn't, a lot of those wouldn't light the LED. Uh, might be a little hard to see on screen. Oh, the green is lighting up nicely. And it's 1.86 volts. That seems about right. And it, it lights up pretty well. If you can see that on screen. And I soldered the red one in reverse. Let's see how that does. Oh, yep, perfectly. Glows nice and bright. 1.615 for the forward voltage drop on that. That's great. I like a good diode test. And this is uh, supposed to go up to uh, 10 volts on its diode tests. So, great. I'll, I'll be trying that out. So you should be able to at least measure out, if not if not light up, uh, some white LEDs or something like that, maybe. So let's take a resistance measurement, and let me grab a set of four-wire croc clips. So if we're going to do measure, do a resistance measurement, let's let's do it right, reasonably right, as right as I'll get it. And I had noticed on the forum some guy had. Uh, I think it was on the forum, or there was a picture he had uh, labeled the resistance of all of his uh, test leads and banana cables. And uh, I'm not going to be doing that, but let's just see what we get with one. And we're showing very low resistance, uh, 0.011, so uh, 11 milliohms, 12 milliohms. That's probably pretty reasonable for for a test lead like this. And now how about a uh, short piece of, I think it's 14 gauge, uh, US gauge copper. And that is settling in at 1 milliohm. There's some noise in here. It's moving just slightly. So very precise resistance measurements. It's as good as I'm going to get with uh, what I'm doing right now. But uh, 0.3 milliohms for my short little piece of copper. So there had been on the forum some questions about the back panel and so here what you get is uh, your four wire, uh, your typical four wire sense. This is the four wire and then this is the uh, regular sense inputs. Then you've got your current, uh, your amp inputs. This is a three amp limit. This is 10 amps. So if you need to do uh, 10 amp up to 10 amps then you'll have to go to the back panel to do that the front panel is 3 amp only and then you've got the usual LAN LXI uh, there are no uh, separate licenses to buy it comes with it it's just there along with the you know, USB uh, and their what they call their TSP link and this will link into uh, some of the other devices like your source meters and things like that um, 
so that these devices can kind of talk back and forth to each other. There's also a digital I.O. port here and DB9. Now the pinout for this, as you can see right here, this is exactly the same set of pinout, the same pinout for this connection as you get on the uh, Keithley Power Supply, the 2280S has exactly the same one, and I had used that earlier with uh, some triggers and stuff. And in this case, I believe it's all just digital I.O. here. Uh, if you need triggering, there's an external trigger uh, input and output. I believe there are two. There's one input for trigger and an output for uh, external, uh, an external output for uh, measurement complete. And then, of course, uh, the GPIB, and again, that's included uh, with the purchase of the meter. Uh, normally, on a uh, new device, what I'd be doing is uh, first thing I do is spin it around and check the uh, IEC input and make sure that it's set to uh, the US voltage and has the right fuse in it. However, um, in very fine print here, this actually takes. 100 to 240 VAC uh, with no switching. It will, it uh, takes care of that all on its own. So it's a universal input. No need to worry about that. And one of the key features of this is the uh, measurement speed. So you can swipe and go over to the uh, NPLCs. And David mentioned the crazy update speed. So uh, I don't know. So let's try. Uh, there we go. All right, so if you go too far, you'll get uh, an error message, and this says 0 0.005 is the minimum. So clear. 0.123. There we go. So now it's going to settle in on the crazy high uh, update rate of 0 0.0005 NPLCs. <laughs> and that's just ridiculous. That's just an amazing read rate. Um, we can also take a look at what that is really doing from a data perspective down here on the graph. That's impressive. And here we go. We've got full screen uh, graph, and I think we can zoom in on that. You can just pinch and zoom um, if I get a little better at this. And it's really high resolution on the screen. And of course, it's ridiculously high resolution in the measurements. So we can just zoom in on some, some set of data. That's just great. Love the pinch and zoom on the screen. A little practice, and I might be get the hang of this thing. So there you have it. This is my first look at my new uh, Keithley DMM7510. I'm looking forward to doing a lot with it.